My name is Zaheer Jaddi. Today I'm going to take through the latest tail gas analyzer which we Amitech has launched. Uh, this is the core heart of the sulfur recovery unit. This analyzer is the latest model called model 888 analyzer. This will be installed on a tail gas analyzer. If you go through the tail gas analyzer basics, so the model tail model 888 analyzer will be installed on the tail gas location of a sulfur recovery unit on a cloud session. The analyzer is the latest model from Amitech which is rated for 60 degrees ambient and it is going taking care to direct mount approach of the analyzers. So when you go to the cloud session, we have the sulfur recovery unit cloud session in which you will have the tail gas analyzer installed at the tail just before the incinerator if it is a cloud session. If it is a TGTU session, it will be before the TGTU session of a sulfur recovery unit. This analyzer is mainly used to control the trim air of the sulfur recovery unit. This analyzer is also called as a feedback analyzer which will control the 10% of air to the sulfur recovery unit air control of the scartometric ratio for reaction furnace which will be burning your acid gas and the main air which is 90% of the air will be controlled through the feed gas analyzer. When the feed gas analyzer is running uh, and taking care of the feed forward control and the tail gas analyzer will be taking care of the feedback control for a perfect operation of a sulfur recovery unit in a cascade control where the feed forward and the feedback analyzer should be in cascade control. The ideal situation will be the feed gas analyzer will take care of the variation in the feed concentration of H2S, hydrocarbons, benzene, toluene, xylene which is coming into the system and the tail gas analyzer will correct is at the tail session of the sulfur recovery unit by adjusting only 10% of the trim air. The primary purpose of this uh, primary purpose of this tail gas gas analyzer is to measure the H2S and SO2 concentration and this model 888 will give you the concentration of H2S and SO2 and also it can give you an air demand signal which can be directly hooked up to your trim air wall. The sulfur recovery process in order to go through the sulfur recovery process you get an acid gas for a typical gas processing plant where you have gas wells the acid gas concentrations could be between 50 to 60 percent typically is the 50 to 60 percent in most of the Middle East plants you take the acid gas concentration 1 percent of hydrogen sulfide is 10,000 ppm and you take a 60 to 70 percent of hydrogen sulfide coming into the sulfur recovery cloud session which means that you are looking for 600,000 ppm to 700,000 ppm and you want to take this and you want to convert everything into your product is called sulfur. So your target is to convert all the hydrogen sulfide going into the sulfur recovery unit and make a maximum recovery for and convert everything into this sulfur granules and this will be a separate session for that. So when you are doing that what you are doing is you take an hydrogen sulfide gas, you pass through a reaction furnace. The reaction furnace typically is running at 1050 degrees between 900 to 1300 degrees C based on what kind of impurities you have in your acid gas. You take the gas, pass through the reaction furnace and then since it's an exothermic reaction, you are burning hydrogen sulfide, you have exothermic heat coming on, you have a cascaded waste heat boiler to the reaction furnace which will take out the heat and you can give water supply to this waste heat boiler and generate steam. The primary reason for generating this steam is the sulfur plant is an energy provider. It provides you a lot of energy to be used into the other part of the plants and this one will generate a huge amount of steam. This steam generated can be used for all the tracing required for the sulfur recovery unit and also can be used for other purposes. The main purpose for having a sulfur dew point. What is the sulfur dew point? Sulfur dew point is a temperature at which the sulfur vapor will change its phase from one to the other and for all the sulfur cloud session till we go to the last condenser there should be a minimum of 118 degree C temperature 118 degree C temperature in order to make sure the sulfur is in liquid phase or a vapor phase if you are below that temperature you may solidify you have problems with the choking and you have problems on the sulfur depositions on those unheated or cold spot tubing and piping so once we get this steam all the tracing is done through that 
that you go to the first session there is a first stage condenser and the whole session first session gives you 70 percent of recovery 70 percent of recovery maximum 70 percent recovery based on your air control based on how you operate your reaction furnace you can achieve up to 65 to 70 percent of the recovery then you go to the catalytical converter this converter is a almona ball sometimes people use titania beds combined with the almona beds in order to have a reaction the primary purpose of this is to have a 2 is to 1 ratio of hydrogen sulfide molecule and so2 molecule in this converter these converters are making a complete combination of a of a equation in which h2s combines with the so2 in 2 is to 1 ratio and forms sulfur if the ratio or the uh, air demand is not matching to the 2 is to 1 H2S and SO2 concentration, the reactivity of the catalyst is very poor and you will not be able to recover much of the sulfur. Same thing happens in the first stage and then same thing happens in the second stage. But how do we know that these converters are doing a job? and the catalyst is performing the best. Only way to know that is to measure a H2S and SO2 concentration at the outlet of those converters which is, uh, which is the tail of the cloud session. That's why this analyzer is also called tail gas analyzer, a demand analyzer or a ratio analyzer. It is, it is a very famous analyzer and the only make which we have for hundreds of years people are using with confidence is Amitek model 900 series or 880 analyzers. Now this is a new generation analyzer, 888 analyzer which is latestly launched and we have installed as AIMS more than 25 to 30 units in Middle East and we have successfully commissioned some very good analyzers on this location. Let me go through the basics of the analyzer. So this 888 analyzer will be directly mount on your tail gas and you will have a isolation wall below it. So you will have a 2 inch steam jacketed isolation wall. You can see a steam connection in, steam connection out on that. It has an isolation wall but this wall normally once the probe is inserted through this you will not be able to isolate it. This analyzer will be installed, this wall will be installed below your tail gas analyzer flange directly on your process pipeline. This analyzer is also called close coupled analyzer and it has two sessions on this analyzer. One is the electronic session and one is the sample conditioning session and self sample handling session. Everything in this box is 150 degree heater and everything is above the sulfur dew point. We are we have to be very cautious when we go to this analyzer the primary rules is make sure your safety gears are proper you have special hand gloves which is suitable for high temperatures and then you have your safety detector hydrogen sulfide detector in order to go to these units you have to follow a buddy system when you ever whenever you go to a sulfur recovery system to work on this tail gas analyzer do not go alone on this analyzer go with the gas testing devices to this analyzer have your personal monitor and a fresh air breathing apparatus accessible at this location you may have higher concentrations up to four to five percent of hydrogen sulfide and you have to make sure that this analyzer is the heart of the sulfur recovery unit and 99 percent of the time this analyzer will be in an ESD control or in a tail gas control and it's operating by controlling the trim air of the sulfur recovery unit. Before working on this unit you have to make sure the per proper permits are in place, you have a proper procedure to go and inform the operator that you are going to work on this analyzer if you have any zero zero action you are going to take on this analyzer this may directly impact the operation of the sulfur recovery unit so before you touch this analyzer you need to inform the operator that you are going to take this analyzer into maintenance or testing mode where the operator can take back this analyzer from the auto control to the manual control where he can watch the manual system temperatures on their catalyst bed and run without this and but you cannot spend more than maximum half an hour one hour on these units in order to minimize the emissions level as long as this analyzer is not working the operations of the sulfur recovery unit will be poor and you may have impact on the environment so this analyzer is a vital safeguard to the recovery of the sulfur as well as to reduce the emissions on a sulfur recovery unit this analyzer is a unique analyzer because you have a 60 degree spec on 
on this with IP65. This is the first analyzer with sulfur recovery unit which has a 60 degree ambient rating on that analyzer. Means you can directly mount this analyzer without an analyzer shelter, without anything required on this unit to like before we used to have huge analyzer shelters we need to maintain a specific temperature in those shelters but this is not required you can provide a nice three-sided shelter on top of it and you can un mount this unit directly in the field without a necessity of a big analyzer shelter or cabinets with HVAC system or air conditioning unit the unique feature of this analyzer is the life of the lamp is more than five years so you have if you see there is the two sessions I will go through a, a session which most of the people who has might have worked on on the 880 analyzer so the Amitech has continued to use the 880 approach of this this type of analyzer where we have an heated O1 session and then we have an electronic session for zone 1 units we have a purge unit currently the purge unit is in bypass mode make sure that you bypass the unit before you open any enclosure otherwise it will trip the whole analyzer and it can it can take a impact on it may be having a connections on the fault going to the control room so make sure you have it in a bypass mode and this this bypass mode can be done by the purge controller going and making into a bypass and you bypass the unit first before you open any of the enclosure I will let me in, let me go through this session here the two enclosures we have here for the triple eight analyzer is one is an electronics enclosure one is the sample cell or a sample conditioning enclosure in this enclosure we have two isolation wall one for the sample isolation wall and one for the return isolation wall we have two isolation wall whenever we are working on this process make sure that you isolate these two walls before even you start to open an enclosure before going into opening any enclosure best is to go into the flush mode and you can go and flush this analyzer into a back perch mode keep these walls open after a few minutes time when the nitrogen or air will be passing through the whole sample conditioning flushing back everything to the process go and isolate your sample wall and the return wall when you are having this enclosure make sure you you should know that the sample conditioning system is really hot you cannot open in a normal condition or with your bare hands make sure you have proper safety enclosure not the bubble type uh, with cotton uh, cotton hand gloves make sure you have proper leather gloves the everything inside could be really hot and the sample conditioning system we have to maintain above 118 degrees C the enclosure is heated to 150 150 degree centigrade and the demister is controlled at 129 degree centigrade let me go through the components installed here so we have a unique very unique demister now which is before Amitech used to have a demister with two pads on the bottom and the top on the 880 model we've used the same approach for the newer version of triple eight analyzer but the demister parts are very big you can remove a lot of amount of sulfur first thing what we are trying to achieve is when we are in when you install these units directly on the process there is a lot of amount of sulfur vapor and sulfur coming into this analyzer the primary problem for the whole analyzer is handling the sulfur vapor and sulfur molecules you are trying to measure hydrogen sulfide and SO2 that can be easily done by any analyzer in the world the, but the challenge is the interferences the sulfur vapor will bring the dew point sulfur vapor will have on this and the impact of the sulfur vapor on your measurement cell so what we are trying to achieve is we have installed a demister here the demister the primary function of the demister is to make sure it knockouts all your sulfur and reduce the sulfur vapor concentrations before it goes into the analytical cell where you are doing an H2 and SO2 measurement. We want to avoid any interferences, clogging of the windows by presence of the sulfur vapor into the cell. The, the whole whole analyzer the cell is heated at 150 degrees but the demister is heated at 129 degrees the whole idea is to keep a differential temperature of 20 to 20 degrees between the cell and the demister in order to make sure the sulfur vapor gets collected due to the temperature differential and we every one hour every 3600 seconds we flush back the whole system so that the sulfur vapors can go back to the process flush everything back perform a nice zero on the system and make sure that the sulfur vapors which are collected into the sample system has flushed back every hour the basic problem the biggest hurdle for us is handling sulfur vapor and this demister will take care of 
removing that sulfur vapors it has been proven for last 50 years of Amitech experience on these analyzers it has been proven working and more than 2000 units are installed with the same demister principle and functioning without any problem worldwide so once we have the sample going through the demister the sulfur will be knocked out and then we have a sample cell through which the gas will flow and the famous aspirator of Amitech which is using a very small amount of pressure where in order to create a differential pressure to suck the sample and return it back. This flange arrangement is a unique arrangement in which the sample probe and the return is going through the same, same, same flange. So you have a hole in which you have at the bottom of the system we have two holes one for the probe to go in and one for the return line to be connected back to the process and the whole pressure drop pressure we are talking about is a maximum of two to three psi psi g arrangement on the aspirator pressure to take a very limited amount of sample if you take more sample you create more problem you don't want to do that the unique feature of this 888 analyzer it has an automatic aspirator control wall so if you see in this system we have a wall which is called the pressure control wall it's a digitally measured pressure control wall we measure the process pressure and before we used to have a manual aspirator where all the technician used to go and measure into the display the cell pressure you can monitor the cell pressure here currently is 14.25 14.7 typically atmosphere is open to atmosphere when you are running on a sulfur recovery unit you can be little bit positive pressure on the on the process line then people go there typically technician used to go and adjust the aspirator by viewing the sample pressure and switching off the aspirator to get the real sample pressure from the process and get a small amount of differentiation. The previous model Amitech 880 used to get 0 0.08, 0 0.07 PSI A of pressure, differential pressure. That was enough to suck the sample and bring it to the cell and return it back. The unique feature of this 888 analyzer, which is one of the first analyzer in the world to do that, is to have a, a digital or pressure control wall which is automatically reading the process pressure by switching off the aspirator and trying to give an in, in enough amount of aspirator and during shutdowns and startup this feature will be very important when you have a change in the process pressure now you don't have to go and manually adjust the pressure you can use this process pressure control wall where it is automatically will adjust the aspirator based on the changes in the process pressure we have installed several units where customer were having problem on varying process pressure where this was these units were installed just before the tail gas and all tail gas units sometime when the tail gas treating units tgtu units are bypassed there will be a pressure differential between normal cloud session running and it is cascaded with tgtu so this feature will allow you not to go to the tail gas analyzer and every time finding an optimum point this is done by the analyzer into its own automatic pressure control system this is a unique feature the analyzer is having all the components inside into a clear as stainless steel enclosure and this is going through the sample conditioning system so as i was mentioning you about the sample conditioning system let's go and see what do you have as a special case for this triple eight analyzer triple eight analyzer is using a xenon flash lamp the xenon flash lamp life is minimum three to five years and uh, unlike the model 900 analyzers where you used to have a change in lamp every nine months to 12 months now the life will be three to five years we have we have installed these analyzers more than two and a half years now we have never failed in lamp panel till now so the xenon flash lamp is a unique lamp which is using a wavelength of 200 to 400 nanometers the light passes through here comes to a reflector block passes through the sample cell goes back to a very unique board which is having the four four filters as it was before on its 880 analyzer it can filter the h2s so2 sulfur vapor and a reference at 400 nanometers these three four measurements are fixed wavelength there is no moving part in this analyzer this analyzer also have a unique feature where you have a calibration filter inbuilt you do not need a calibration gases on this analyzer this filter can be used to calibrate the absorbance of a uh, of this uv photometer when you do not need a, a gas calibration done other than that 
this xenon flash lamp which is measuring a unique pulses coming out from this uv wavelengths you can also measure the amount of pulses the uv lamp gives and you can every one hour when you are performing a zero on this analyzer you can increase or decrease your pulses and make sure that for example you pulse at a specific pulses 15 pulse a minute what will be the amount of output coming on in that way you know that if your sample cell system is clean your optics are clean when we are pulsing 15 pulse we know what is the amount of voltage we are getting or the output coming out from the photodiodes so you can pulse every one hour that um, 15 pulses and make sure that that is coming back on your photodiode boards or not once you do that you are damn sure that your complete optics is clean so not only we are doing a zero but also making sure that we are having a span calibration done with a pulse mechanism which is a unique feature for triple eight so this is the second unique feature the first feature was explained where you have an automatic aspirator wall to make sure that the aspirator is controlling based on the sample pressure and the second feature is it has an automatic pulsation mechanism to perform an automatic photo span on this unit the third one if customers say that sorry I want to make sure that I have this unit working and the optics are proper optics are clean you also have a manual system in which you have a index a manual filter like a Cal filter which was a unique feature of Amitech before on 4000 units on 880 units and also on many of the units which they used to manufacture before the Cal filter mechanism still exists you can insert a Cal filter with a known absorbance value and you can make sure that the full optics are getting tested and the full optics are being identified to make sure that the system is working so electronic boards point of view we have only one board which is the microcontroller board or the master mcu board on this analyzer no more cards no more hundred cards on the analyzer no more multiple cards into that one master card which has and then that cards control everything all the rtd connections are going there all the electronic outputs are going there pressure control is done through that board and all the signals are getting processed on that board and we have all the connection including the ethernet connections and all are coming from there and we are able to use only one card doing that other than that in this session we have a lamp power supply which is powering up your xenon flash lamp and then we have the detector board with the four unique diodes which are installed on that and that's the detector board which you are going to use which was there before on 880 on the right session uh, now it's a part of a nice environment in an electronics enclosure not outside into a hot environment we have one detector board one microcontroller board or main mcu board and then we have a power supply board power supply unit here there is a display board which is which is having a unique feature on this display board where you have a first time in the world first time in the history of analyzers where you can connect a usb and you can leave the usb there and when you come out you can remove the usb and go back it will generate you a csv file with every minute data on that file and it can store up to 160 days of data into the system and you can take out the usb you can get all the locks automatically into the system which tells you what are the alarms you got what is happening to your readings what are the problems you face onto your sample conditioning system you can monitor your demister temperatures you can monitor everything on that okay and then this analyzer also have a feature where you do not have the digit you do not have a AC solenoid walls these all solenoid walls which Amitech used to have on 880 before those walls were purely AC solenoid ASCO walls now this has become a unique feature this manifold wall is similar to an IPS4 Amitech analyzer where you have a manifold in which you can adjust the manifold pressure you can adjust the uh, adjust the pressure for the you know for the system and this is all digitized you can read those uh, pressures and this manifold all walls are dc most rela more reliable walls than the before walls so everything is into this box and the box is having minimum electronics so that you have minimum impact of temperature and the performance of the analyzers are getting unique the next session will be on the software features of this analyzer so the triple eight is using a unique software feature which is based on the similar mentality Amitech was doing before where you have a software which is Amitech based software in which the 
board is microcontroller type of display where you do not have touch screen display so the life of the display is longer you have a color screen now and on the display you can see the amount of all the information you want on the basic screen so you can see the h2s and so2 readings you can see the cell temperature you can see the demister temperature and you can see uh, alarm conditions there currently there is no alarm on the units so you will see none the important feature is the cell pressure which is an indication of a plugging in your sample conditioning system if your cell pressure is going up you understand that there is a there is a plugging happening into your sample conditioning system and also it also tells you a timer and the primary display where it tells you when is your next zero I look on the triple eight analyzer uh, software menu map we have uh, three menus action menu configuration menu and diagnostic menu in action menu we are performing all the actions like zero calibration photo span sample measurement steam blowback filter calibration next configuration in configuration we have a status temperature pressure communication timers calibration system backup and restore usb transfer diagnostic menu consists of alarms trending analog output relays and valve proportional valve detector now first we'll go through the action menu in action when you want to perform zero calibration just press zero it will start the timer showing zero flush and zero timer with countdown timer so it is performing zero calibration after the 60 seconds it will come to sample flush then it will sample measurement filter calibration this is a unique feature for the triple eight analyzer where we are avoiding the calibration gas to injecting high concentration of calibration gas in the system for verification filter calibration is used to cross verify the analyzer performance with standard absorption filter we'll call it as a neutral density filter so this filter is located inside the electronics this is a neutral density filter and to open this you need 2.5 mm allen key just turn around you will remove the neutral density filter neutral density filter consists of one side is filter the other side is the hollow path uh, the hollow path is towards the sample system when it is measuring when you want to do a filter verification you need to just turn it back and put it inside so now we are doing filter calibration so click on the filter calibration it will uh, give the reference absorption of 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for all filters. Then the current absorption is all are zero because there is no absorption in the sample system. So click start. Performing zero calibration for 60 seconds. So it will perform first zero calibration. Then later on it will ask for the filter for filter calibration done the filter calibration so you can see the reference absorption versus current absorption both are matching with filter span value click for update press for update it will set the, all the parameters then click escape remove the neutral density filter from the detector housing press ok Remove the density filter and insert it in opposite direction.
press ok now it's done now we have a configuration menu where we have a status menu in status menu you will see all the temperature pressure and duty cycle diagnostic values then temperatures in temperature we have a five zone temperature control where we have a cell temperature heater temperature demonstrator temperature detector temperature and flange temperature all these set points and variables we can vary with these menus cell set point here we have a cell set point if you want to change the cell set point just click it will ask for a password and the password is 4222 access granted now you can set it into 150 degree press enter then proportional band no need to change and reset no need to change these are factory set values and deviation 10 degree now it start rising the temperature as a cell so you can see the current temperature and the set point value now we have a heater menu where we can see the current value versus over temperature value these are read only values demister temperature where we have a demister current value set point value proportional band reset and deviation detector temperature current value and set duty cycle and set point flange temperature current value of the flange maximum limit of the flange heating minimum value of the flange heating pressure set points cell pressure monitor we have a pressure transmitter uh, psi a value current value with with maximum pressure value of period 4 minimum pressure of period 4 maximum pressure of period 2 we can configure here manifold pressure manifold pressure is a full analyzer manifold box pressure where we are distributing our pressure for aspirator and the other utilities like zero aspirator pressure aspirator pressure the current value flow set point duty cycle manual override of aspirator when you want to do override of the aspirator it will not control automatically for the process change of pressure but if you don't override it will automatically control its pressure according to the variation of the process pressure communication in communication we have a four analog outputs which are user configurable selection first channel 1 analog output h2s concentration if you click you will see the drop down menu h2s so2 air demand ratio access h2s cell temperature depending on the selection we can see the value for minimum 4 million maximum to 20 million then if you click right you will see the output 2 if you click one more time you will see the output 3 if you want to come back click left so it will return back the menu to come out just click the cross mark relays in relays relay 1 and relay 2 are factory set relays relay 1 is fault relay second relay is warning relay and relay 3 and relay 4 are user configurable now we are in relay 3 depend on the id parameters it will give the limit alarms for low and high same relay for also custom configurable relays depending on the id parameter selection we can assign for these channel relays output modbus modbus is a rs485 communication where we have a baud rate parity stop bit address timeout parameters
TCP IP configuration. In TCP IP, if you disable the DHCP, you will go to the static IP address. If you enable the DHCP, the analyzer will give the dynamic address for the server. So we have a current IP address which are con configurable also. Just click over there and it will ask for the IP address change. Remote input. If you want to perform remote validation through DCS, you can perform through remote input. The current function is disabled. If you want to enable it, just click. It will ask for photo span, zero cal, or steam blower. These three functions we can do through remote validation input. Timers. Period timer, calibration, and steam blowback timer. In period timers, we have a period one, period two, period three, period four, period five, period six, period seven, period eight, nine, ten, eleven. These all timers are user configurable timers. Calibration and steam blowback. The analyzer will perform every one and a half hours fan calibration. These we can perform by like putting the value 5400 seconds in span interval. If you put zero, it will perform only zero calibration. If you put a span, it will perform zero and span. You, you can have a steam blowback interval counts also. Like four counts, eight counts, 12 counts. These counts are performance of the steam blowback like every four uh, interval of span it will perform four blowback calibration section in calibration menu we can see h2s zero calibration photo span filter span regression coefficient and spe special values H2S and SO2. Span coefficient, these are uh, user changeable values where we can do manual span calibration. The current value versus the uh, analyzer value standard. These are the maximum intensity of the pulse which is giving the UV source is giving to the analyzer. These are factory configured, no need to change any values. System. In system, we have a serial number, firmware version, system time, and firmware upgrade. Backup. You can take backup by clicking save backup and restore backup. USB transfer. This allows customer to take sensor parameter as well as trend parameters. Just by putting a USB backside of the ME vision board. This is the USB port where you can put your USB and take the uh, transfer your sensor parameter as well as the trends. Diagnostic. In diagnostic, we can see the alarms. Current alarm and diagnostic menu. In diagnostic menu, we can see the alarms current alarm and history alarms by clicking current alarm you can see the current what are the alarms history alarms are stored in the system for a long period of time you can see all the diagnostic alarms which uh, occurred and cleared automatically occurs are the red color and cleared are the black color trending you can see the trend of 30 minutes h2s versus so2 ratio you can see the h2s so2 trend for 30 minutes analog output you can simulate your analog output in terms of percentage just by enabling the diagnostic click yes for diagnostic enabled now you can feed 25% of milliamp of the full scale range 
for all channels or you can perform one by one now you can feed 50% of milliamp full scale now you can feed 75% of milliamp to the scale now you can perform 100% full scale milliamps Okay. After completion of milliamp simulation, just disable the diagnostic and come out of from the menu. Now you can perform relay valve on off also diagnostic. Example, you have four relays, digital relays. You can do the diagnostic for these four relays. Just by clicking enable diagnostic, then you can perform all diagnostic relays on and off. Now it is close, open close open close open close then open close open close now close open close open close now disable the diagnostic and come out from the menu proportional wall diagnostic parameters these are the essential parameter for the analyzer automatic aspirator flow adjustment. These diagnostics are performed when you are in process with automatic diagnostic flow control is required. Then detector diagnostic. Just click the detector diagnostic, you will see the wavelength, diagnostic flash, raw value, absorbance value, flash at zero, enable diagnostics. If you want to perform the diagnostic of the pulses which is giving the raw counts for the measurements, 